Can you give this audience a couple pieces of advice and also anything you have regrets about? Um, you know, I, I think that I probably can't say I have any real regrets. Some of the things that, I'm not sure if this is one of the questions, but some of the things I would do a little bit differently is while I was staying home with my son as I thought about this in retrospect, I think I probably should have worked on my MBA then. For one thing, it, and I'm just talking to you, you know, just uh, giving you the actual girlfriend to girlfriend kind of talk because I think this is what's really helpful in this kind of thing. And I think maybe what I should have done is been in school, you know, maybe I'm only taking one class at a time, but you know, doing something uh, besides being a mom. Because first of all, when I took my MBA in my 40s, it was eye-opening. I learned so much about how people in finance and other functions of the business look at operations and engineering. That had I had that knowledge earlier in my career, I think it would have been very, very helpful. So one thing is that, is that I think that it would have been broadening and it wouldn't have given me a better viewpoint earlier on in my career. And the second thing I think that it would have done for me would be to have my resume uh, not have this big gap in it as to, you know, where were you, what were you doing. I suspect, though I don't really know, I suspect that today it wouldn't be much different. That if I had that gap on my resume and that I had stayed home as a stay-at-home mom, I bet you it, wouldn't, it won't have changed much that that would still be an issue. So I, I think those are some things um, to think about. Um, the other advice I would give you is don't fall into the trap of entitlement. Nobody is entitled to anything. You know, prepare yourself as best you can for the jobs that you want. Get the education, take the lateral move, take on any assignment, Never take the position that it's not my job. You know, volunteer your help to other departments and areas. Go and visit with them. Invite them to lunch. You know, but you have to put yourself in the position of being somebody they want to work with. They know. It's the whole networking thing. Yeah. And so if the one piece of advice I have for you is, you know, don't, uh, don't be afraid to do any of those things. That, that's what works. And people, and don't be so aggressive that you're in people's face uh, because they don't want to work with you. You know, people are uncomfortable with that. And if they're uncomfortable with you on a personal level, believe me, they will not put you in a leadership role. So it is very important to be uh, somebody that people enjoy working with, who's always willing, who's well prepared. And I, th I think that's the best advice I can give. Thank you very much, Annette. Ann? Good advice. Um, so I have this uh, philosophy of, it's kind of a leadership career um, philosophy that derives from the fact that we are in times of tremendous change, particularly our industry. I mean, the change we're going to see over the next five to ten years is, a, is just going to be dramatic, transformational. So my philosophy around career and leadership and management is, do you, I don't know if you all remember, there was a book a few years ago, a few, probably decades. Um, called uh, uh, Everything You Need to Know You Learned in Kindergarten. Well, I say no. Forget everything you learned in kindergarten. So I have a few tenets, and I won't bore you with all of them, but I'll throw a few out. Um, one is that uh, uh, you have to interrupt to be heard. You should interrupt, and I mean that literally. <laughs> there are times when you have to interrupt or you will never be heard. Um, but it's really uh, more a metaphor for what I think uh, Julie and Judy were talking about, and I think you also heard from Annette, and that is, you know, get out there with your voice, um, you know, find the strength to do that, uh, rely on yourself uh, more than, than you may be accustomed to, uh, you have a point of view, and uh, we are all accomplished people in this room, and don't be afraid to take a stand. Um, so that's one of the tenets that I wanted to throw out. Another uh, is uh, do hang out in the hallways even without a hall pass. And that is the whole notion of talking to people and networking. We think of our jobs as sitting in a room and reading reports and doing tasks, but there is valuable time to be spent talking to people outside the business and inside the business. One of the things that I did um, on the advice of one of our directors when I first got into this role 
was I went out to, we have about 40 some odd operating centers, barns, and I went out and, uh, and I'd just sit around and meet with people. I'd go from one to the other, and I learned so much about the business from the people who are actually in the field doing the work, and that was some of the most valuable time I spent. And it was hard, because you had to carve it out. You know, it doesn't feel like it's the work you should be doing. It doesn't feel like it has a product at the end of it. But the, the, what I took away from that was so valuable. So whether it's inside the company or outside the company, hang out with people, hang out in the hallways. And the third that I'm gonna throw out is, um, I say it's big girls do cry. And it's this notion of, um, and you've heard it you know, all morning long, that um, leadership is personal. I truly believe leadership is personal. Um, it's, you know, to some extent, Julie's wolf theory that people want to look you in the eye, they want to know who you are and what you're about, and they, and, and they want to follow you. And that means you have to spend time with people, um, and you have to connect with people constantly. That's a huge part of any job we do, um, but particularly in leadership roles. And um, I think to Annette's point, and in this same vein, this notion of being someone who can connect with people is so important. Um, I have a, a friend, uh, Melody Hobson, who is the president of uh, Ariel uh, Capital, which is a, a large um, financial firm in the Chicago area. And um, she's a little younger than me, but um, she, she uh, uh, in her youth, was at a, a seminar like this, and they had a woman speak, and I don't remember the woman's name, but it was a woman who was one of the first senior executives in an international operation. So this person was, this woman was, you know, way out there, and this is probably back in the 80s. And uh, Melody asked her, so if there's one piece of advice you could give us, what would it be? And she said, smile, smile a lot. And Melody said, I was so disappointed by that. <laughs> you know, I wanted this, you know, um, something that seemed really profound, well, I think it is really profound. Mm -hmm. And I think Melody mm -hmm. came to believe that it is really profound, too. People want to work with people that they like. We're all people at the end of the day. And you can bring the greatest skill set to the table, but if you're difficult or if you, you know, can't work with a group, it, 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 to some extent it's all for naught. So that's the uh, big girls do cry. It's about people at the end of the day. Thank you, Ann. Judy? Great. Well, um... You know, I'll, with, with the question about do I have any regrets, um, I'd have to answer no, I, I don't. Um, if you, um, I'm a firm believer that life is not a dress rehearsal. You better make sure you're living the one you want. Um, and so whenever I feel that I'm getting out of balance with that, I have to sit back and think about it and uh, decide what I'm going to do about it. And often it really is more a matter of not making some big change or another, but changing my perspective. Uh, and actually taking a little time to think and gain a different perspective and maybe change my attitude, and that makes all the difference in the world. I'll tell you, I did have a period of my um, career where I was um, separated and in the process of divorcing, I had a young son who was preschool, early elementary, um, and at the same time, we, our company was going through a merger and I was in regulatory and uh, had the assignment of, um, you know, getting merger approved. And if you um, ever want to feel like you have your company's fate in its hands, be in regulatory at the time of a merger. <laughs> it's a really a big one. And so during that period, I'll tell you, there was no one else I wanted to run that merger case. Are you kidding me? This was what I had been there to do, meant to do, I felt like, for my career. The same point, I was not going to let another person or a TV set raise my son, because I knew I was 36 years old and I was not going to get another chance at that. And so here's how my day would go. Seven o'clock, wake the kid, eat breakfast together, drive him to school, because I will not put him on the bus with those sixth grade boys that look like hoodlums who he grew up to look just like exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stop in the classroom and talk to the teacher because I had that kind of kid. Um, fight my way through traffic, get to work, have a very intense day at work. Oops, quarter to five, got to get on the road because I'll be stuck in traffic, got to get the kid, he can't be sitting on the curb. 
Uh, feed the kid usually at a restaurant. My son has the best restaurant manners of anyone you would ever want to know uh, because that's how we lived. Go home and play a game because he's not going to sit in front of a TV. Read a book and if at, he went to bed at 8.30, I was asleep by 8.31. <laughs> 3 o'clock, the alarm goes off. Get up, log in, pick up all the work that had happened overnight, turn it myself, set the direction of the day, send it out. Oops, 6 o'clock, hop in the shower, do it again. And that was my day. Now, no one ever told me I had to do that. No one ever told me I couldn't do that. Sometimes the person who had the most problem with that about whether it was okay was me. And so, because I just wasn't sure my work didn't look like anyone else's work, um, and was that okay? So when it comes to pieces of advice, one of the things I, I, would, I would leave you with is that sometimes I think the biggest thing we can do for ourselves is give ourselves permission. You don't have to look around you to ask for permission. Lots of times whenever I am doing that, the issue is I'm not sure I can give it to myself. And I really think that's a fundamental thing, thing to do. Um, um, but anyway, for when I look at that period of my career, it's like, are you kidding? I got to do the top two things I wanted to do. It might have looked crazy from the outside, but I got to get my merger through, and I got to raise my kid the way I wanted to. And I don't even know what my three, four, or five thing would have been as far as I was ranking priorities. I got to do my top two. How lucky is that? Mm -hmm. How lucky is that? And so it worked for me. I mean, it just, it just worked for me. But if there was another piece of advice I, I, I'd want to leave you with or a gift I'd love to give you is love what you do. Again, life isn't a dress rehearsal. Love what you do. Um, and, and that's why I think I could get through a really challenging time that maybe looked crazy from the outside and step back and go, I am so proud of what I accomplished. I'm so proud of what I've accomplished. So are there regrets? You know, no, there's not. The, la the last piece of, of, of thought that I'd leave you with really goes to mentoring. Um, you know, there, there's all sorts of different types of mentoring, and I, I was one who said I didn't follow rules or career advice or whatever, I just really worked hard and kept going. Um, um, but, but one of the things that I sometimes see is that folks think of mentoring as where, where do I get support and advice and things from folks who are like me but are on a path that I want to be on. And I guess I challenge you to say, you know what, well, you need your mentoring are from the folks who do not think like you at all. That's where you're going to learn and grow. You know, who's the person that's at a meeting and does something that you go, how'd they pull that off? How'd they do that? I didn't know. How, how'd, they, how'd they snatch that thing out of, you know, the, the lion's jaw? You know, ask them. Ask them. I got my best piece of mentoring advice, and this still relates to my, my college seminar story, from my advisor in college, who after that event, I was, as a flight animal, uh, totally rattled and blah, blah, blah. How did this guy dare say this to me? And I don't know, am I stupid? I don't know. I mean, I was just blah, 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 blah. And so I'm in my advisor's office. Now, this was like, a, I was 19. He was like a 53-year-old guy he's sitting there. It's a Friday afternoon, late in the afternoon. He's got his feet on his desk. He's got a scotch in one hand and a cigarette in another. And I'm there going blah, 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 blah. And he just takes a drag off his cigarette and he looks at me. He says, you know what? Nobody thinks about you as much as you think they do. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody thinks about you as much as you think about them, you know? Here it was, if that event has, with my seminar had happened on a Tuesday, it's Friday, and I'm still blah, blah, <laughs> blah, and he's like, you know, the guy's out having a beer. He has not thought about it since. Are you going to give everything away to this guy? You know, no. You know, no. And so, you know, but what happened that day, I could not have come up with that thought to save my life. It was not in my vocabulary. It was not the way I saw the world. And with that sentence, that guy took my world, if it was like this big, and he made it this big because he opened me up to a possibility of thought that I could have never come up with on my own, my friends wouldn't have come up with, and I tell you, that piece of advice has stayed with me and, and, and done great things for me. 
And so I got my best piece of mentoring as an executive woman from when I was 19 year old, years old from a 53 year old guy who had a scotch and a cig in his hand. You know, <laughs> it's everywhere around you if you avail yourself to it. So listen to the stuff that isn't the way you think and, you know, expand out your world. Thank you, Judy.